What's going on, you guys? A news channel, NBC, um, the news anchor interviews Avi Loeb. Avi Loeb is saying that this interstellar object is going to be flying past Mars today. As of today, when you watch this video today, it will be passing by Mars. And we're going to have a multitude of cameras, satellites. Things are going to be capturing images of this particular object. We won't know for a couple days, but it's coming here. Within a few days, we're going to know exactly what we've been looking at and if this is an anomalous object flying through our galaxy. Avi Loeb speaks. What he says is going to shock you guys. According to astronomers, 3i Atlas has all kinds of surprises. We've only seen a handful of, of blurry shots that uh, look like a tail is kind of starting to form. There's the unusual chemical signatures. It's producing way more nickel than iron, and scientists don't really know why. And when it comes to size, some estimates say it's about three miles wide. In comparison, Manhattan, it's only about two miles wide, and that is at its widest point. Finally, the very rare trajectory. This is 3i Atlas. This is Mars. 3i Atlas is about to swing by and a fleet of camera ready rovers and orbiters are standing by to snap some pictures. So stay tuned because the closest pass is tomorrow, October 3rd. Let's talk about it with Harvard professor and author of the book Interstellar, Avi Loeb. Uh, professor Loeb, always great to see you. Thanks so much for being with us. So tomorrow it like is like first day of your world series, right? Um, this Mars flyby. When do you think we're actually going to see the first images from the orbiters and the rovers that we here on Earth can, uh, can see? And then how clear are they expected to be? Well, it's great uh, to join you, Gary. Um, um, we, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, and uh, I'm really very eager to, to see the picture. It may take time to process. It really depends on which instrument we're talking about. There, are, there is one uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that was launched by NASA. There is the Mars Express, ExoMars. Uh, that were launched by the European Space Agency. And we should get the data from all of them. Uh, and in particular, the high-rise camera on NASA's uh, uh, orbiter uh, could give us a pixel size of 30 kilometers. That's the very best resolution that we ever obtained huh. of 3 i Atlas. And it would be particularly interesting to look at the brightest pixel because it would constrain the size of the object. Just uh, last week, uh, I submitted a paper for publication where I estimated the minimum size. It, it, it's supposed to be at least 33 billion tons worth of mass because we don't see it recoiling as it's losing mass to uh, there is also some nickel being shed from it without iron. It's really a very anomalous uh, object, perhaps natural, but uh, we should allow for the possibility that it's something else. Uh, when you're talking about this insane mass and when you're talking about like the extreme nickel uh, production or, or, or the composition, like how anomalous are we talking here? Well, it's something we've never seen before in solar system comets. Uh, but uh, these are icy rocks that are in our backyard. And uh, in fact, uh, the question is whether similar rocks are made near other stars. And we might uh, be up for surprises. In particular, there is a tra trajectory which is perfectly aligned with the plane of the planets. And that is something that cannot be explained just by observing or imaging it. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, it's uh, really, uh, the first object moving so fast at 60 kilometers per second, that's 600 times the fastest race car that we have on Earth. So uh, it's anomalous in ver uh, various ways. And uh, my uh, most important question is whether it could be technological or it's just natural. Hopefully we'll know more within the coming days. And, and that brings me to my next question. Uh, you're talking about trajectories and you know, I follow everything you post, um, and, and I saw you post a few days ago about the wow signal. Now, this is something I wanted to touch on. Now, this uh, news anchor mentions uh, something about the wow signal. Back in 1977, uh, we had received a radio signal from outer space. Now, if we look at the trajectory of where that signal came from and analyze that trajectory, just like Avi, uh, Avi Loeb is going to discuss here in a moment, it looks as though that radio signal that we received in 1977 came from the same exact direction 
as a 3i atlas is coming towards us right now does it have any kind of correlation i don't know but let's hear what avi lope has to say it sounds like he has narrowed it down to nearly i think he said nine degrees a very very slight margin of difference coincidental who knows let's hear what he has to say and i like that stopped me in my tracks for those that don't know like uh, the wow signal is is something that is just a, a historic moment in astronomy uh, here's a quick explainer from our friends over at pbs about the mystery radio signal that was detected back in 1977 watch this real fast imagine seeing pages and pages of ones maybe a three a, th a two here and there and then you see 6EQUJ5, right? That was why he said, wow, right? U is 30 times as strong as the noise in the background. Nothing was coming anywhere near that strong of a signal. It, it was kind of a surprise, right? The signal. And so the question was, did this come from some sort of extraterrestrial intelligence that was beaming out radio signals towards us? Okay, so if I understand this correctly, and, and sorry for, uh, you know, uh, trying to read your, your very uh, academic papers and, and, and understand them, but if I understand this correctly, the question that you were posing was whether this very anomalous radio signal that we detected coming from deep in outer space, whether that matched the trajectory that we are now seeing from 3i Atlas, as in, uh, you know, we know which direction it was coming from, and it seems to be coming from the same direction as, as the wow signal, is that right? Yes, to within uh, nine degrees. Uh, on Sunday evening, I decided to check it out be, uh, after a day full of uh, interviews. And uh, it turns out that the two directions of the wow signal and 3i Atlas are aligned with a chance probability of 0.6%. And uh, I then asked, uh, where was 3i Atlas uh, in 1977? It was 600 times farther than the sun is from the Earth, uh, roughly three light days away. Uh, and so um, uh, the amount of power that was needed to produce that signal is about a gigawatt the output of a nuclear reactor that we have here on Earth. So it's quite possible uh, to have uh, such a, a nuclear reactor on a gadget that is uh, the width of Manhattan Island. All right, guys, let me know what you guys think. Um, Avi Loeb is saying that the odds of it being a natural phenomenon are higher than it being an anomalous phenomenon, but it shouldn't deter us from examining each and every asteroid that comes into our solar system right because you just never know and i think he's correct on that aspect you guys let me know down below what you think do you think avi Loeb is correct on that do you think avi Loeb is onto something when he says that he thinks that this may be an anomalous object flying through our solar system i don't know and what do you guys think about the signal that came to earth in 1977 and is tracking to be headed in the same direction that this asteroid is coming in as well. Is there a correlation between that signal and this asteroid or anomalous object flying through our solar system? You guys let me know what you think down below. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.